I'm going to show you how you can use this repository to quickly and efficiently write a custom Go plugin and then test that in a tight gateway and uh, deploy it. So the first thing that we're going to do is call in this re repo locally, which I've already done here. So if I show you a Git remote, we can see that there. And now we can just follow the readme to get started. So the first step is to copy the example environment file and make a real uh, file out of that. So we can just run this command here. Um, I've already run it. And then the outcome is on the type directory comps, you have this file here. Uh, the next step is to add your license key. So it says that here. So open up the file and add your license key in there. After that, you're gonna run make. I'm going to run make up and I'll explain the difference in a second. So it's all come up now. We can go back over here and go to localhost 3000. And at this point, you'll have a bootstrap screen. Just bootstrap and log in. So then you're going to go ahead and you're going to create a new API. We're going to call this uh, example or whatever it is that you want. You can leave the type as REST and the upstream URL as the default HTTP bin. Finally, I'm just going to turn off authentication. You should do the same as well because it's not needed for the purpose of uh, compiling Go plugins. And there we go. We have a repository in there that we can use. I'm gonna curl and go to the get endpoint that's going to hit the HTTP bin get endpoint and it's going to echo back our various HTTP uh, response. So the headers that uh, are coming back from the server and arguments if there were any and other stuff. Cool. So just following along in the repository here, as part of the make command, what happens is uh, it will generate this middleware custom go plugin.so. And uh, we have to now tell Tyke how to access that. So we're gonna copy this chunk of the API definition, which instructs Tyke to load this plugin. And then we're going to add it. So here back in the API, we're gonna click on view raw definition here in the custom middleware block, we're gonna go ahead and paste that. And uh, let's not forget our comma. And so what we did, we added this custom middleware block, which executes one custom Go plugin. We can see it's custom Go plugin because it's the driver. And it calls the add foobar header function in the Go plugin binary that's located here on the gateways file system. We hit update. We can open up iTerm, we can send the same API request. Now we have this foo bar v7 and we've even added hello world. So let's make a change to that and recompile. Here in the Go directory, we have our custom Go plugin. This is the basis of our Go plugin uh, repository. We can open that up. You can see our code, it's quite straightforward. Let's uh, increment this v8, hello, world we'll change both of those and then we're going to run make build and just while that's happening let's explain the make file really quickly so when I run make without any arguments it would call two sub commands so make up and then make build make up just runs the stack and then make build we can see here builds the go plugin and then restarts the gateway so that's what I just did I run make I ran make build so it's rebuilding the Go plugin, so we can take a look at that if we find where that is. So Go build will run three different commands. The first step is it will run a Go mod tidy and mod vendor. It will then use Tyke's plugin compiler in order to generate a binary. And then finally, we will take the outputted binary, you can see here it's longer form name, and then move it into the Tyke middleware custom plugin um, directory. So here's Tyke. Here's our middleware and here's custom go plugin is where it's gonna move it into. And this is a directory which we've mounted using Docker. So you can see here for our gateway, well, we've mounted this directory into the gateways um, file system. So as a result, custom go plugin shows up here. In a production environment, you wouldn't normally use file system mounts. You would use the bundler, which is covered in a different section of the readme here. Just read the bit about deploying the go plugin. So now that's done, 
uh, we can go back and we can make a curl to the get endpoint. And you can see our code has been updated because we've recompiled the plugin, we've restarted the gateway, and it's pulled the latest Go plugin. Thanks for watching.